Hey, what's going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing super well today. I wanted to keep talking. A lot of fantasy baseball drafts are happening this week, so I want to make sure you guys are prepared. The next couple of weeks, fantasy baseball gets intense. Take it from a long time fantasy baseball vet. You don't want to go into that draft unprepared. You don't want to go into that draft not knowing who's who, who's not who, where to pick someone, where not to pick someone, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. So today we're going to talk about two positions. We're going to talk about first, third baseman, second, shortstops. My top 15. Most leagues are about 10 guys. So these are your top 15 players at the third base position. So guys, who you must have. Your top five third base targets. If you want to have a rock star at third base, this is who you're going to target. Nolan Arenado. Obviously, you're going to target Nolan Arenado. I mean, he plays the best defense in the MLB. He gives you 30, he's going to give you probably 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, 95 plus runs, a 280 plus average, a ridiculous OBP, not a lot of strikeouts, plenty of walks, and the Cardinals are going to be really good. So make sure you are targeting Nolan Arenado. Um, you know, first round pick. Uh, let's see, Jose, oh, yes, it's important to note. Arenado's a great spring. He will be diminished just slightly. A, because of the new team, and B, because he was injured last season. Let that work to your advantage and take him late first, early second, because he more than likely will fall. Next is Jose Ramirez. Um, he's always ranked so much lower by the professionals um, than he should be. He's the second best third baser in all of baseball. Uh, when it comes to, with the bat, he's going to give you first round value, but he always falls to the second, third round for some stupid reason. Um, you, know, with, you know, with Nolan Dorr in town, Ramirez is like the man. He'll give you 20 plus stolen bases, very similar numbers to Arenado in terms of home runs, RBIs. So make sure you're looking at uh, Jose Ramirez. Um, you know, second, second, third round, he could fall even later, which is crazy. Um, these next three guys are probably going to go way ahead of them. Um, Alex Bregman, he's one name that you frequently hear. Um, he's going to be one of the biggest names in Houston this year. Um, he's going to be the reason behind many wins going into this season. He's a very disciplined hitter um, with a new look offense that's going to look a bit different than in recent years. You know, no Springer, no Reddick. Um, Correa will probably be gone midseason. Alvarez is working back from injury. Yuli Gurriel is still there. Um, questions in the rotation. They're going to need Bregman to carry carry a lot of the load. 27-plus uh, home runs, 87-plus RBIs, a high batting average. Uh, Pepper in about five stolen bases here and there, maybe closer to 10. Um, and you got yourself Alex Bregman. Um, probably he'll be picked around the third, maybe fourth round, uh, most drafts. Um, Anthony Rendon, he is going to be better than he was last year. He was really good in that first year with Mike Trout, but I think he's going to be even better. You know, 25 home runs plus 85 plus runs, 85 plus RBIs, another high batting average. Um, probably second, third round again. Um, Manny Machado, this is one guy who was absolutely incredible in 2020 after a disappointing 2019. He was an MVP finalist, and I think think he's going to be overdrafted um, because he was MVP finalist. Uh, you know, look for him to hit a, probably 35 plus home runs, 100 plus RBIs, 90 plus runs, probably around the 270 batting average. I would look to hopefully maybe get him late after some of these other names fall off the board. Um, or if you're in an auction league, put Machado up and guys like Rendon, Bregman, and Ramirez, or and, um, and Arenado up before you, so then you can steal a guy like Jose Ramirez on the cheap. Um, that's what I would do. But again, Machado is probably going to go in the second or third round. Um, next group of guys is guys you should probably get because they're still going to be really good for your team. Uh, Rafael Devers leaves the pack here. I think after a great breakout in 2019, he followed up with a really good 2020. Um, you know, with Alex Cora back in as manager, um, Verdugo is the other only other you know most advanced hitter of the team. Devers is easily capable of hitting 28 plus home runs, 90 plus runs, 
and now you're close to RBIs. Um, him and Verdugo make one heck of a one-two punch, and I think Devers is slowly just on his way up that climb of the best third baser in the MLB. Next, Chris Bryant. He has so many trade rumors, speculation that drops his value a ton. Um, he struggled in 2020. Um, I think he gets back on his feet in 2020. He's just a great hitter. He's a former MVP. Um, I think he gets back on his feet easily in 2020 because he's playing for that big deal. Um, he's in the last year of his contract. He's playing for that super huge mega deal because he's a Scott Boris client. I fully expect him to hit around 280, 29 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs. Um, and, you know, he's going to carry a lot of the load. I, you could probably end up getting him and Odevers probably, you know, third or fourth, fifth round, maybe even later. Um, just because they, they don't hold that same value. Um, Gio Urshela. You know, I feel we all disrespected Urshela. He was ranked in the bottom third of MLB third baseman in 2020. So he was a bottom 10. However, he was quite excellent. Um, you know, I think he was going to break out in 2021. 25 plus home runs, 75 plus RBIs, 80 plus runs, 285 plus batting average. He'll get some playing time at shortstop too, possibly. Who knows? Uh, depending on Andujar. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, but I really think Ursula, you know, he, he's one guy who might fall a little bit later. So maybe four through seven. That's kind of where somewhere you might be able to get him. Um, Alec Bohm in the Phillies, my next target. He made one heck of a punch with um, Harper and JT Romito in that Phillies lineup. However, I th with JT Romito working back from injury, he should be fine for opening day, but boom, a full go. He's able to hit all over the field, beat any shift. Um, I think he takes another step forward in 2020. 25 plus home runs, 85 plus RBIs, 80 plus runs, and a high batting average of 290 plus. However, I like Bohm even later in draft. I think rounds five through eight, um, you could score Alec Bohm. And lastly, um, or number number 10, is going to be Matt Chapman. Chapman's an excellent option for any fantasy team. Literally any fantasy team. Um, I made one of the worst moves last season in letting, uh, I can't believe we said it, I let Matt Chapman go because he was struggling. Um, and he came back to bite me. He had a great season. Um, you know, he's going to give you a lower batting average, but he's going to give you a lot of pop. 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, 90 plus runs. Um, if you can supplement your team with some other guys who have a higher batting average, lower strikeout numbers, that'll help you a lot. Um, however, I think Chapman's going to be easily worth four to six round, fourth through sixth round kind of value right there. And then my 15, uh, 11 through 15. So you got you could do worse with these guys, but you could have done better. Um, Josh Donaldson, he endured a rough 2020 along with the rest of the Twins offense. He rebounded strongly in 2019 when he put up 37 home runs and 94 RBIs after a injury-filled 2018. Just a lot of risk. Um, but he can be a top 11, you know, kind of MVP candidate kind of guy. Um, he'll give you a lot of home runs, a lot of RBIs. However, you will have to sacrifice your average and your strikeouts quite a bit. Um, but you could probably target Donaldson probably around like six, seven, um, kind of wherever you want. Um, next is Iohito Suarez of the Cincinnati Reds. He's another guy who's going to cost you a lot of your batting average, a lot of your strikeouts, but he's going to give it back to you with like 34 plus home runs, 95 plus RBIs. And he could possibly lead the league in strikeouts as well, like he did in 2019 with 189. Um, the strikeouts give Suarez a bad rep, which you could probably push him down to like the 8th, ninth round of um, third baseman. But, you know, we'll see. I If you need to, get Eugenio Suarez. He's my 12th ranked third baseman. Um, Yo Moncada, this guy's still developing. Um, but I think he is out there he's gonna be really quiet i think this guy you could probably get after the 10th round if you're lucky um unless you got a white Sox hyper in your in your draft then mm, oh well um so he's probably looking about 20 plus home runs 70 plus rbis 290 plus batting average um kind of guy next guy i'm thinking around number 14 
to Brian Hayes of the Pirates. Yes, he only took 85 at-bats, um, but he had five home runs, 11 RBIs, and a 376 batting average. I think Brian Hayes is going to ball out in 2021 with the Pirates, be the offensive wrecking, wrecking ball, and just be fantastic for fantasy baseball. He's one guy you can target even later, probably around 11th and 13. Um, Miguel Sano, you know, another guy with huge home run RBI upside. Also plays for the Twins, lower average, and a league-leading amount of strikeouts. You know, he can easily give you 25-plus home runs, 70-plus RBIs, and he's an excellent, you know, substitute option for you at third base, first base. Uh, last guy I want to talk about, this is just an honorable mention, my boy Kyle Seager. Um, you know, depending on your, your draft, how it shakes out, your bench, Seager's been, you know, a steady guy over his entire career. You know, you know what you're going to get from Seager when you draft him. You're going to get about 20-plus home runs, 70-plus RBIs, and 260 batting average. However, you know, someone you could probably target, you know, 10 through 12, maybe even later. Um, and I think it'll just be really good for your fantasy team. Um, so definitely look the way of Kyle Seager. Um, he's been on an uptick the last couple seasons, and I think it continues with an improving offense in Seattle. Um, lastly, you know, if you're desperate, you got to get desperate. Um, Eduardo Escobar, Justin Turner, Brian Anderson, um, Vlad Guerrero Jr. slash Kevin Biggio, um, Evan Longoria, and Mike Moustakas are all guys who have third base eligibility that, you know, won't be too awful for your team. Um, so that's a third baseman. If you want to remember that, I will po I put the description down there of who, or the link to the full article. There we go. Uh, let's see. Going back to the fantasy dugout for just a minute. Let me just hydrate. Oh yeah, if you want an awesome bottle like this, 10% off. Link tree in description. Coldest water. Just amazing. Let's see here. Fantasy shortstops. So shortstop position is absolutely loaded. It's the deepest position in baseball. You, you can you can't really go wrong with any of the top fifteen. Um, just don't overdraft. Um, so we're gonna give our honorable mentions. Oh no, we're not. We're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna do that last again. Uh, let's see. Your obvious target, Fernando Tatis Jr. He's gonna be a, a top pick, first round pick. I don't need to say anymore. Corey Seager's right after him. Um, another guy who's going to ball and give you 25 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, a high batting average, 290 plus. Um, round one, round two, if you don't get Tatis Jr., get yourself a Corey Seager. Francisco Lindor, um, you know, he's going to be an absolute force with the Mets. He's going to have an amazing season. He's playing for a big money deal. If that doesn't happen before opening day, which I think the Mets are going to be pushing to do so. Um, so fully expect Lindor to be um, with the Mets for the foreseeable future. Um, however, I think he's going to hit about 30 plus home runs, 85 plus RBIs, and have a 280 plus batting average. And, you know, he's going to be a round 1 through 3 kind of pick, and I think he's absolutely going to crush with the Mets in 2021. Next is Trevor Story. He's an um, just incredible power hitting shortstop, playing for a big payday, which helps for fantasy. These guys who are playing for that contract, that always helps. Um, Trevor Story, he's going to give you about 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, 275 plus average. Um, you know, again, he's another guy that's going to be a, you know, round one through five kind of pick. He's one of your top five picks. Um, but round one through three is obviously pretty much where he's going to get drafted. Number five, you're looking at Tim Anderson of the White Sox. You're not going to get elite power numbers, but you're going to get a high average, plenty on base, plenty of runs, um, RBIs. Um, another guy round one through four, or probably two through five at the at the lowest he'll go. Um, I personally would like him to fall to like the six seven, um, because that's where I think his true value is. Um, then you get guys like Trey Turner. Um, you know he's again another guy planning for a big extension because the Nationals want to extend him, so he's gonna ball out to get more money, of course. Um, you know, the Nationals are playing with a chip on their shoulder in 2021 to re prove that 2019 wasn't a fluke. Turner's going to be a part of that. 20 plus home runs, 75 plus RBIs, and a 295 plus batting average. Um, 
you could probably target Turner in that five through rounds five through seven. How do you get a Baez at Mago? You know the whole Cubs were not themselves in 2020, so don't don't look too far into 2020. Um, I honestly had Baez on one of my teams and he was benched for most of the season, but I hope because I I know it was coming. Baez again another guy playing for that big payday in 2020, um, or in 2021 for 2022. Um, he's going to give you 25 plus home runs, 85 plus RBIs, and a 265 batting average. He could pace the Cubs in literally every offensive category, him and Chris Bryant, um, because they're both playing for that big contract extension. Um, Baez, another guy, probably around 6 through 8, honestly. Um, next is Alberto Mondesi. You know, he, I feel like I have him ranked too high at like 8. But I also feel that's appropriate. I, I'm not fully sold on Mondesi yet, but I think he's one of those guys that you're going to get later, probably around like 8, eight through 12, who could provide you, you know, 3 through 5 value. Um, you know, 20 plus home run, 70 plus RBI, 260 plus average, and I think he's just going to be a steal uh, later in drafts. Next is Bo Bichette. Um, he hasn't played more than 46 games in a season, but. I honestly think he's going to give us, give fantasy owners 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, a 295 plus batting average, and even 15 stolen bases in there as well. Um, I think he's going to be an amazing steal uh, if you're able to grab him after the eighth round. Um, possibly in round nine, that's about where I would feel really confident drafting him. Um, next is Carlos Correa. I, I personally think Correa. He's not going to get that extension from the Astros before opening day, so therefore he's out at the end of the season. Therefore, he's getting traded mid-season to somewhere that he's going to trade, sign and trade kind of deal. Um, look for him to set you know career highs in all his offensive categories. 25-plus home runs, 95-plus RBIs, 275-plus batting average. You know, the ties to Houston and then Houston not being that good, I think drops his value a bit. So I would look for him about probably rounds 10 through 12, if not around 13, uh, in that range somewhere. That's where I'm super confident drafting him. Next, um, you know, your 10 through your 11 through 15 right here. Uh, Xander Bogarts, you know, back in 2019, uh, we saw Bogarts hit for career highs and home runs, RBIs, OBP, and a fifth in the end of MVP vote. Um, I think similar numbers are coming for 2021. 25 plus home runs, 95 plus RBIs, 297 average. Um, you know, I think he's going to fall still into that 10 through 12 kind of range. Um, that's about where I would, would look at him um, if I'm needing a shortstop. Uh, Dansby Swanson, another guy who, you know, he's a. If we would have had a full season, Swanson would have been a top five MVP candidate in my mind. Um, He's not going to wow you at the bat, but he's going to be, he's going to give you a healthy outlet to kind of come back against some of those other guys that I mentioned earlier in the video at third base, who you need a solid contributor. Um, 20 plus home runs, 75 plus RBIs, 270 plus batting average. Probably able to steal Swanson, probably 11 through 13, 11 through 14, somewhere in that range. Um, next is Jorge Polanco. Um, you know, just not a sexy name at all. But he will not disappoint you with his production. Another one of those guys who is a very good supplemental player. Uh, 15 plus home runs, 80 plus RBIs, 10 plus stolen bases, 275 plus batting average or so. Um, probably target him around like 13, 14, excuse me, 14th round. Uh, Paul DeYoung. Paul Young is a very valuable piece because he carries second base and shortstop eligibility in most formats. At least he has in the past. I haven't seen what it looks like this year. Um, he doesn't hit for the highest average, and he's going to give you headaches in terms of strikeout numbers. However, if you're able to draft him as your second shortstop, you're going to get great value out of him. 25-plus uh, home runs, 75-plus RBIs, 115-plus hits. Um, but Young, he's definitely a 13 through 15 round kind of player. Then lastly, um, I had Marcus Semien on here. Um, you know, I love the landing spot with the Blue Jays, even though he's going to be a second baseman. Um, he was still in the shortstop conversation when this was all coming together. So 
got Marcus Simeon in there. Um, I think he's going to provide about 25 plus home runs, 75 plus RBIs, a 270 plus batting average. It looked very much like his MVP self from 2019. Um, some other guys that you can you can look at that I don't recommend, but you can look at uh, Ahmed Rosario, Elvis Andrews, Kevin Newman, James Segura, Willie Adamas, Wander Franco, uh, Nico Goodrum, Nico Horner, J.P. Crawford, and Brandon Crawford. Of course, those guys are in no particular order. Um, but that's it. We're going to do that. We're going to end there. Um, check back in again with the dugout. Um, and the fantasy dugout is all your fantasy baseball um, tips, tricks, and inside takes. Um, and again, we just want to thank our partners over at the Coldest Water uh, Water Bottle. Again, link tree in the description to go and save yourself 10% off this amazing product. Voted Best Water Bottle in 2017, 2017, 18, and 19 by Business Insider and Men's Health Magazine. So, go and check that out. Thanks for being with me. Good luck in your drafts. Stay tuned because we got a lot of sense of baseball content still to come.